January 10th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Matthew 10 from the New Testament. Jesus called his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits so they could cast them out and heal every kind of disease and sickness. Now these are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. James, son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus. Simon, the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Jesus sent out these twelve, instructing them as follows. Do not go to Gentile regions, and do not enter any Samaritan town. Go instead to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. Freely you received, freely give. Do not take gold, silver, or copper in your belts. No beg for the journey, or an extra tunic, or sandals, or staff, for the worker deserves his provisions. Whenever you enter a town or village, find out who is worthy there, and stay with them until you leave. As you enter the house, give it greetings. And if the house is worthy, let your peace come on it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And if anyone will not welcome you or listen to your message, shake the dust off your feet as you leave that house or that town. I tell you the truth, it will be more bearable for the region of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. I am sending you out like sheep surrounded by wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of people because they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be brought before governors and kings because of me, as a witness to them and the Gentiles. Whenever they hand you over for trial, do not worry how to speak or what to say, for what you should say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will hand over brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by everyone because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. Whenever they persecute you in one place, flee to another. I tell you the truth. You will not finish going through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not greater than his teacher, nor a slave greater than his master. It is enough for the disciple to become like his teacher and the slave like his master. If they have called the head of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they defame the members of this household? Do not be afraid of them. For nothing is hidden that will not be revealed, and nothing is secret that will not be made known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the housetops. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Instead, fear the one who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Aren't two sparrows sold for a penny, yet not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will? Even all the hairs on your head are numbered, so do not be afraid. You are more valuable than many sparrows. Whoever then acknowledges me before people, I will acknowledge before my father in heaven. But whoever denies me before people, I will deny him also before my father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. 
For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be the members of his household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life because of me will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Whoever receives a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, in the name of a disciple, I tell you the truth, he will never lose his reward. God, I think the, I think my favorite verse or the verse I go to a lot in this section is about whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me and whoever loves sons or daughters more than me is not worthy of me and I remember the first time I read that verse and I couldn't believe it I'm close to my family and you were asking me to give up my family or so I thought as I read that more and, and prayed to you and, and asked for wisdom on that verse and studied it and learned more about what you were actually saying, it goes back to the Old Testament when you gave us those Ten Commandments. Thou shall not have any other gods before me. And we always read that, God, and we always go, ah, got this. I don't have any idols in front of me. I don't have any... Uh, wooden heads or candelabra things that I pray and worship to these other gods like those people did in the Old Testament. But here in the New Testament, you're talking about other gods all over again. That sometimes we're willing to make our family a god before you. We're willing to make them more important than you are in our life. If we're married, sometimes our husband becomes that God in our life before you. Or perhaps we have children. And those children come in our heart before you do. If we don't have those things, we may have other idols. It may be work, it may be TV, it may be food. It may be gossip, but they're all idols if we put these things before you in our heart. God, as we go on our way today, I ask for prayers of grace. I ask for prayers of strength. I also ask for discernment that maybe we're sitting here saying no no God is first in my life I always put him first so I ask personally for me God can you show me the areas that are still idols in my life can you show me those things in my life that still come before you even if I am not seeing them because I know they're there. I know there's times when I get so caught up in life and getting things done. Uh, sometimes getting my to-do list done for ministry becomes more important than the people. And, and I know right there, <laughs> I'm wrong. So God, I do ask for discernment today. That you would start to show me these idols. I will gladly work on them and get rid of them in my life. But cleanse my heart and show me what isn't working. Show me the parts that are not your will. 
And the amazing thing is, God, I know that you will because of how much you love me and how much you care for me. Thank you. In your son's name we pray. Amen.